the holidays could be a great time for grandma to really connect with grandkids. And my next guest encourages nanas to bond with the kids through stories. Studio 5 contributor Mary Jo Bell joining me to share the six stories your grandkids need to hear about your own life. Mary Jo, I'm so happy to be talking to you today. I'm always so happy to be talking to you, Brooke. What a delight. How are you? I'm doing well. You're the warm blanket that I think we need on this cold Friday, December day. Oh, and this so topic sweet. is warming as well. I, I mentioned at the beginning of the show, I have a very keen memory of my Aunt Nan rallying and corralling the kid chaos at a tiny cabin in Henry's Lake back in my childhood and putting my grandma and grandpa at the center and asking them, giving them prompts, asking them questions that, that brought forward these rich, wonderful stories that I still remember and treasure to this day. My grandma, you know, winning a, a beauty pageant as a little girl and riding on a, on a float with white kittens in her lap and my grandpa having to hitchhike in order to get to high school. I mean, these stories that demonstrated their character and their personalities. And you say these stories matter. In fact, you wish you had more stories of your own grandparents. Oh my gosh, Brooke, those are great stories. Yeah, I wish I could get in a time machine and go back and get a hundred more stories. I treasure the stories just like you, the treasures, the stories that I have. But now that I'm a grandmother of 11, I am their age or getting to be their age. And I, I need that inspiration, that wisdom and that guidance. I would love to have more stories. You've identified six stories that our grandkids need to hear. And I'm so excited to dive into your list and hear your wisdom as to why you selected these specific life points. First, how you met your spouse. That is a fan favorite. That is one that you can tell <laughs> on repeat, maybe every holiday season. Your Aunt Nan would love gather everyone around and do that one. I think we have my parents' story memorized. That's going to gather all the people. Um, there's a reason the Hallmark Channel is so successful. Everyone loves a good love story. So that's a great question to ask. Be your grandchildren's Hallmark story. I mean, there's something just so lovely, especially if your grandkids are older and in that phase, knowing how grandma and grandpa found love, fell into love, worked on love. That, those are valuable themes. Yes, so true. It's beautiful. It's warm. It's wonderful. And it just gives them that little extra dose of security. Like there's some yes. really strong family ties here and they want to be part of that. Kids want to be part of a, like a family quilt of love, like that extra security. Everybody has a story and all those stories sort of wrap around grandchildren, like a quilt of self-esteem building love that they can walk through mortality with. Oh, it's I really comforting. That. I love that. How do we weave in ancestry without putting people to sleep, Mary? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being honest. A, yeah, no, that's true. A lot of kids are like, see ya, gotta go. Yeah. But it's later that they'll love them later. So maybe being more animated, maybe sort of, you know, kind of one thing I've noticed with kids is that you can sort of notice how they talk and their pace and their banter and match that. So for example, I've got a little grandchild that will say, Nana, you will never guess what happened to me. You don't even know. And if I come back with, you won't believe what your ancestor did when they crossed the sea and they came over on the boat and then this happened. You can kind of go, you know what I mean? Like with little yeah. kids, that's very effective. Just be animated and excited about it. That's just a fantastic communication mm -hmm. skill to mirror or to reflect. I love the idea of applying that to those little grandkids. That's so sweet. Um, you want us to share a time that we failed and how we overcame. Yes. Uh, Sarah Blakely, who started Spanx, <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Um, she talks about how important failure is and how her dad would say at the dinner table, don't tell me all your successes. I want to hear about your failures because we are all failing forward. And there's so many hidden gems that, and lessons learned in failure. And that's true for all families. We're all bumbling forward mm -hmm. and we learn and connect through our failures. Well, and we see our grandparents in such a composed position of life, right? They, for the most part, have it figured out. They have the wisdom and the experience behind them. So to go back and, and examine, you know, from a positive lens at least those bumps and those misses that's that's esteeming that's that's validating I totally agree yeah it's actually beautiful it's kind of a gift it it's is. kind of a gift to overcome things and and fail it's so is this thing. next story uh, tell a story about a time you were embarrassed Oh, you bet. So embarrassment is great because it creates laughter. And the shortest distance between two people, as we know from the quote, is a sense of humor. And mm -hmm. so when we have laughter, like, for example, I've told my grandkids and will definitely tell all my teenage grandkids many embarrassing stories. But one of them is I was in high school and I had gone to a dance with this very, very kind and good young man, great young, young guy. Mm -hmm. But I was new to the dating scene and I was nervous and I'm a pretty honest upfront open person. And I didn't know what to do. And I thought, well, I'll just do the honest thing. I'll just say to him, cause I could tell he wanted to maybe date some more. And I thought I'll just tell him the truth. So I stopped in the hallway and said, I, I can't date you. Like I gave him the whole little spiel, like yeah. in the hallway. Embarrassing. Pre-rehearsed. You had your script. 
<laughs> I'm so dumb. But then I ran like fight or flight into the nearest opening. And that opening was a men's bathroom. And then when I came out of there, I looked at them and said, uh, cause they're still there. He and his friend, I said, if you need a bathroom, it's just right there. You know, and I was just mortified, but it was funny later and it's funny for our grandkids. So That's a breakup for the books, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> a breakup and a bolt right to the men's restroom. That's hilarious. That's hilarious. Uh, a more meaningful prompt, perhaps how you found your faith. That's a story you say grandkids should hear. Yeah, my husband was looking at this um, topic that we're talking about. And he said, man, Mary, faith is the most important one. And I thought, you are 100% right. Because we want our children, as the saying goes, to be able to warm their hands by the fire of our faith. And so sometimes we can do that in a, you know, far from the matting holiday crowd. We can take some grandchildren aside if they're older. But sometimes we can't. Like the little kids are maybe not going for that. So one thing I found is if I bring a book, you know, you've got the classic books. And if I bring that, and like this one is about the symbols of Christmas. And if I just share like the chef. And if I say, you know what, if I just pause for a second and just say, you know what, the shepherds love Jesus Christ and your Nana loves Jesus Christ too. You know, just those little moments. It doesn't have to be a long thing. It can mm -hmm. be short. I had someone once say, uh, if you want to take the preach out of it, get personal. And that's what I hear you yeah. saying. Again, we joke about ancestors yeah. kind of being the, the snoozer um, of the story bunch, but really this idea of faith lines, like when you personalize it through your lens and your experience, even if that faith experience wasn't perfect, and yet they see where you are now, you know, strong, resilient, being an example or a disciple of Jesus Christ, that says something that communicates so much in that one little story, doesn't it? Amen. It yeah. really does. It's just those perfect little personal stories that connect us. And we know that we actually have an eternal and sacred connection with these people. Yes. We know, I mean, if you think about it, like a near death experiences, who comes to visit the people? It's usually grandparents, right? It's mm. often people that are close because those grandparents are keeping an eye on us from the other side. They're real. Their love is real. And so when we share our faith about what may be coming on the next, in the next life, that is, is really meaningful to them. It gives their lives grounding and purpose and meaning. And it creates a little path for, you know, we'll be keeping an eye on them in the next life. So yeah. that's that. Mary Jo, beautiful prompts. The last one, how to choose your life's path. Another one that kind of will bring forward those personal life details and history 